Hello, welcome to He's Hot, but something's off with me, just Joey T. It is not clickbait that I put that I was in a car accident for this podcast, nor was it planned. I mean, no one ever plans to crash. Um, but yeah, it's something to talk about for the podcast, I guess. Um, so got into a, a minor car accident. It was kind of like a fender bender. It wasn't anything super serious. Um, this was Saturday night. I was on my way uh, to go somewhere for Pride Weekend. It was LA Pride this weekend. We'll get into that. Um, and it wasn't like a major accident. No one was hurt. Uh, it was like a low speed thing, but it was like, it wasn't like a fender bender, like per se, where like, oh, like it was like a very gentle, like tap, you know, minor tap on the bumper. It was like the area that was like uh, on the driver's side, like above the wheel. And there was like, a definite like shunt that I felt, but it wasn't like a super like, you know, forceful impact or anything. But yeah, that was eventful. And uh, if you drive for any amount of time, you know, once you've been driving for like 10, 15, 20 years, the odds are that you will eventually get into some sort of hopefully very minor accident, you know, maybe like something in the parking lot or like very low speeds, hopefully where like, you know, damages very low and like no one is hurt uh, for sure but um it was i don't know i knew what to do uh when i got in the accident is very much uh don't talk about or discuss what happened who was at fault if you ever get into some sort of car accident on the road pull over somewhere safe um you know when you meet the other driver yeah don't talk about fault don't discuss what happened just be as calm and just professional and polite as possible. Exchange information, license, registration, driver's license, contact information, take tons of photos, record the location, grab videos of like where you are, of like damage on your car, damage on their car, all that stuff. So I pretty much did that, except that it's a little bit darker, it's a little more difficult. Um, and I wasn't super stressed about the like ordeal of it. I would like to think I'm one of those people where when something bad kind of happens, you know, you get into like a fender bender or like, I don't know, the power goes out or that kind of stuff. I don't know. Your drain's backing up. My drain was backing up this morning. We'll get into that. Um, I like to think I'm one of those people where uh, I stay pretty calm and very much the part of my brain that's very like, okay, we need a solution right now. We need to do A, B, C, D in this exact order. That part of my brain kind of leaps into action. So basically the moment that uh, I felt that I, I got hit or whatever, um, and I was like, oh, we're in a car accident. My brain very quickly was like, okay, pull over somewhere safe, turn your flashers on, stay calm, don't talk about fault with the other driver exchange your registration, the uh, get their license paid and their driver's license, all that kind of stuff was very like automatic in my head. Um, so I guess that's, yeah, that, that, that was helpful to have that part of the brain just like kick in. It could be very traumatic, obviously, when you get into a car accident or any type of accident. Uh, uh, but anyways, no one was hurt. That was the best thing. But I did remember the one part that distressed me out, not the ordeal of it, like, the act of like taking care of being in a car accident, calling up the insurance and exchanging the info and like all that stuff was like very just like autopilot in my head. And I was just like, was just doing it. The only part where I was stressed was, I was waiting for the other driver to find their registration and all paperwork and all that stuff. And I was just like standing on the street, like waiting for them to like get their papers. And then I was thinking, oh my God, like in my head, I was thinking, oh my God, like, did I do something wrong? Was I somehow at fault or whatever? Um, so that was the, like the only stressful part because I guess anytime you get into some sort of accident or something bad happens where you're involved, you always think, so, there's some part in your head that always thinks, oh my God, did I contribute to that bad thing happening, right? I think it's a very natural uh, human thought to have when something bad happens to you. But I don't think it's a smart idea for me to talk about the uh, accident 
in any more detail on this podcast that goes out onto the public internet. Uh, but suffice it to say, I talked to my insurance uh, agent, adjuster, whatever that department is, and I'm pleased with the current progress with which everything is going. And I'm pleased that my insurance agent and I agree on a lot of the points. I will just leave it at that. But yeah, it was, well, that was an inconvenience, basically. The, the real headache is I was actually trying to shop for a new car. Last week, I mentioned I was talking to like a whole bunch of different car dealerships and how they were a pain in the ass to deal with. Well, basically now, I found uh, a broker, basically, uh, that deals with different car dealerships that they have contacts with or they contract with somehow. I don't fully know how that works for like a car broker when you go through them. But basically, I just put in a custom order for a car. I was trying to find a particular model of a car that was already on a dealer's lot. Um, and I was being flexible with like the options and the colors and all that kind of stuff. But basically going through this broker, um, I'm able to specify exactly what options and features should be on the car that I want and I won't pay anything extra for the features that I don't want. I could depict the color uh, of the exterior. I could pick the interior color. Um, you know, it's like the exact model that I want. And uh, through this broker, I'm actually getting a pretty good deal in terms of like what the numbers look like for the lease. And it was basically sleuthing on the internet. There are a lot of car forums for pretty much every type of car that you can think of. From like a Corolla or like a Civic, there are like fan boys and girls out there for like every model and make of car that you can think of. Um, so I uh, was doing some research on the internet. I was just looking up information on that particular model of car that I wanted found the forum for that particular model. And then there's an ordering section where people are discussing their experience with buying that car and then came across um, this um, broker in California that handled a lot of uh, these forum readers orders and they were really happy. So I just went through this person and seemed to be pretty legit. Gonna have to wait a couple of months for the new car to eventually arrive from wherever it's built. So not a great deal, but in the meantime, I need to figure out, okay, I've got this like damage on my car is now worth a lot less. No one really wants to buy a used car that has been in an accident. Whenever you try to sell your car uh, to like a dealer or like whoever, a common question they'll ask is, has your vehicle been in an accident? I can no longer say no to that question now. And even if everything was repaired 100%, you still have that blemish on the record of the vehicle. And that usually brings down the value of the car. So I'm setting myself really low expectations for how much I'm going to get for the car. My insurance is going to pay me for uh, what they think the damage would cost repair. I need to bring the car to like a repair shop or a dealer or something and just have them at least appraise the car for them to tell me um, to get a third party's opinion on how much they think the repairs would cost and how much less the car is worth now, now that it has an accident in its history. So that part will be a little stressful. Um, I want to get the maximum dollar out of the car, to, the old car to sell it. But at the same time, it's like, sometimes I just want things to be done with. Like sometimes I feel like things are not worth the stress, um, the mental stress of like, oh, we have to like, uh, fix the car. We have like the maximum dollars out of the insurance people. What the insurance people are trying to like, uh, you know, take you for a run and they're not giving you anywhere near what the repair cost should be. Now you need to take it to like your own body shop to get it appraised. What if that body shop isn't good? Now you got to start shopping around for like different body shops and make sure you get one that's going to fix it properly. And you know, what if like all the, what if there's like a shady repair shop that you don't know until like it's in too deep, they have your car waiting. All this kind of stuff is the stress that I don't want. So I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with this car yet. I would love to just like sell it to like some dealer with the damage and for them to just like knock hopefully maybe only like a few thousand dollars off. Um, so yeah, that's the part where I've got a couple months to figure it out before the new car comes with this old car, what to do. So 
I'm a car person. I do care about cars, but it's like I don't know. I just want to. I just want this car to be gone. I should really like the car that I have, but with like this ordeal and everything, it's just like okay, just like someone take the car. Like I, I, I don't care. I'm gonna get less money for it. Just take it and like just get rid of it, and then I'm just gonna get the new car when it comes, and then like it will all be done. So that's the stress that I have for. That, which is not so much fun. But again, the important thing is no one got hurt. It was a pretty minor accident. My insurance is taking good care of me. And uh, yeah, there we go. Something interesting that happened this past weekend. Other interesting things that happened this past weekend, it is LA Pride. Um, and I didn't went to too many parties. There's obviously a million parties that were going on. Uh, all my friends were out. I went to two parties for LA Pride. The first one I went to was the uh, pool party on the rooftop of the Andes Hotel, which is a pretty well-known hotel in West Hollywood. It's actually so close to my place that I just walked there. It was like a 10-minute walk. It's really, really short. The weather was not very good this past weekend in Los Angeles. So it was like 68 or 70 degrees, and it was just like overcast. So um, I was afraid that not many people would want to go to a pool party when it's not that warm and it's cloudy. Um, but when I got there, it was fairly full, actually. Um, it's not like the biggest uh, rooftop pool, um, so it doesn't take actually that many people to like fill it up. But like I ran into some people, um, so it actually turned out to be pretty fun. There were times where the, sea, uh, the sun was peeking through a little bit, uh, which was great. It still wasn't warm, but it was warm enough that you could wear a speedo and not feel cold until around like i don't know five o'clock or so like an hour before they started closing got like a little chilly a little windy and a couple of my friends were like shivering and then that's basically my clue to just like leave the party but it was overall uh relatively fun and then that night uh was uh gps so that's when i was driving the gps uh, GPS is Gay Party Saturdays, which is kind of like a local production um, circuit party thing. Uh, and GPS throws uh, circuit parties for most, like special weekends and long holiday weekends. So um, obviously for LA Pride, they had a circuit party. It's pretty much always uh, at this Globe Theater that's downtown when they do it on Saturday nights. And I was on my way to GPS when I had the car accident. So after the car accident, I was like, oh, you know what? Like, I've had enough for, like, one day. Maybe I should just go home. So, like, I started driving home, and I was like, you know what? Maybe a party would be good to, like, take my mind off of it for right now. I probably wouldn't have slept very well if I had just, like, gone straight to bed anyway. So I ended up going to GPS um, for, like, just a couple hours. It was a cute party. The go-go dancers at GPS are always, like, very, very hot. And uh, me and my friends, we were, like, kind of, we happened to be dancing at the at the front of the dance floor. And we got um, a show. They always put on good shows at GPS, actually. Yeah, and the go-go's are very hot. So that's actually all I did. I didn't do anything on Sunday, but after the car accident and then GPS, I was only there for, like, a couple hours because at, like, 1.32, I was like, you know what? Like, I've had enough fun for tonight. I'm just going to, like, go rest. Um, so the only thing I did on Sunday was just like, take it easy. Um, all the bars and everything we ho were obviously open. I thought about maybe going to a uh, heart, but I know some friends are going to heart down in, um, the we ho where all the bars are. But I was like, you know what? This is like an off, I'm just going to have like a little mini vacation day where like, I don't have any expectations to do anything productive. And I just get to like sit on the couch and like, not worry about anything, just like cutting myself a little bit of break after what happened the night before. So there you go. That's fun. Um, you know what's not fun? When stuff in your house dies and you have to like go emergency, buy something like hop in the car and like drive somewhere immediately because there's like something in your house that you are so dependent on that if that thing happens to die, you need a new one right away the last time i did that was the toaster oven which i killed when i tried to clean it you get oven cleaner stuff that you can spray into your oven i sprayed it into my toaster oven maybe sprayed a little too much and it wouldn't power on anymore uh and i had to emergency buy at 
the Best Buy or a Target or something, a replacement toaster oven because I use my toaster oven every single day. It's how I cook most of my meals and the proper oven in my house doesn't get any use. I don't think I've ever used any of the full-size ovens in any of the houses I've lived in by myself um, ever. When I used to have um, roommates, um, my good friend Charles, uh, we moved up to San Francisco together uh, in 2015, and he likes to cook meals when it's like a special holiday, like for Thanksgiving and stuff. Um, he would like try to cook fancier things, and he would use the like full-size oven in our kitchen, but it was just me. I would like never touch it. To cook a meal for one, to heat up that entire thing, first of all, it takes forever. Second, it uses up tons of energy. Third, it heats up like the entire kitchen, if not like the entire apartment. It's basically like running a massive furnace to cook like one single piece of chicken breast. So uh, I just never use it for that reason. I don't cook big meals. If I ever want to have like a big meal with friends, I'm not a cook. Like I, I would be the last person to cook for other people like they will cook and they will host or we will go out or you know what we would just order delivery like I'm not really a cook so I'm not gonna like go bake something so yeah that's the last time I went out and emergency bought something literally an hour ago I was at the Best Buy not for a toaster oven because um my uh streaming box for my tv just like I was watching something it was playing and then it just like out of nowhere died. I tried to like reboot it and do all that stuff, do a reset. And then it just like completely died. So this is like, you know, when you have like a streaming stick, like a Roku or a Google one, um, or like a fire TV, like that's the streaming device that I have. I have a Google one. Um, and it just died, but it lasted six years. So it's actually had a good run. And I remember a few weeks ago, it was flickering a little bit and then I rebooted it and then it was okay. I'm like, okay, it's just whatever. Earlier today, I did have a power outage for like 30 seconds. So maybe that was like the final hammer on the nail on the coffin of that thing. It just couldn't take another power outage or whatever. And then it just decided to fry itself. So it was 8.30. The Best Buy nearby uh, closes at 9. So like hop right into the car, like chow down my dinner, just like shoved it down my mouth. It's like, I must fix this before I go to bed tonight. So drove down to the Best Buy. I had to wait like 10 minutes for them to like grab the inventory from the back. More stores are doing this thing where they don't put the items on the shelf. There's like a QR code or to scan or to ask someone if you want to buy that thing because they keep all the stock in the back. So they wait 10 minutes for them to do that. And then I drove back home, uh, plugged it in. It, it took forever to set up and it's like downloading some updates right now. So after I record this podcast, I will go play <laughs> with my new Google Chromecast thingamajig yeah but my life is very very glamorous uh car accidents and uh being unemployed being on a career break and um yeah having to go to best buy to emergency buy google chromecast thing so i can keep sitting on my ass <laughs> in my living room to keep watching tv all i've been watching lately is uh, hgtv so i usually don't have cable uh, or anything like that. I don't have a lot of the streaming services because I don't watch that much content. I probably create more content than I watch usually, but I watch stuff on YouTube. My YouTube recommendations, the homepage is right now a mix of cars, various like RuPaul's Drag Race related videos, and some history documentaries on various like wars because I was watching a whole bunch of documentaries on the first world war and uh k-pop music videos it's a very very weird mix as you're scrolling through the recommended section that pops up to the top uh on the tv and the youtube app of like Oh, like the, the 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 great war and it'll talk about tanks in one video the next one is like a K-pop video, and then the third one is like some sort of car review. It's, it's a very, very weird mix, so the algorithms are clearly at work there. But um, in other news, in 
a week or so, uh, I'm going to be going to New York. So I plan to go to New York for New York Pride. That's coming not this weekend, but it's going to be uh, the weekend after. So this goes up on a Thursday. So it will be like a little bit over a week um, from when this goes up. That weekend is the New York Pride. I was going to go uh, on Wednesday, the Wednesday or Thursday, before Pride weekend and get to New York then, stay for like five days. I will leave on Monday. But I decided randomly, very randomly today, and I'm not usually that impulsive of a person. Usually every trip I have is planned like way in advance, uh, research all the flights, what are the best days to go and all that kind of stuff. Very randomly today, I was like preparing breakfast and I just had a thought, excuse me, I just had a thought, I think I want to just get there earlier and just spend the full week before Pride weekend just in New York, not to party or anything, but just to like be in New York, just to have a change of scenery. I am sitting on my ass a lot at home right now. So I think the change of scenery will maybe do me a little bit of good. And I was in the very back of my head, kind of had this like funky idea like it would be kind of fun to live in New York for like a few months um and that's not really because I would want to do anything in particular that's New York specific it was just kind of like maybe I just want to like go live somewhere else for like a while and it would be really cool to say oh I've lived in New York for x period of time even though I don't think I could live in New York permanently, I don't think I can take how cold the winters are. I am not a fan of all the storms that hit the East Coast. The closest I got was I lived in D.C. for like a little over a year in like 2012, 2013. And that was the same winter uh, storm season where we had uh, Sandy come through. It didn't hit D.C. like that bad. We had like brownouts. And we had, like, a bit of snow, but it wasn't, like, when New York got hit by Sandy, um, that storm season, and, like, everything was flooding, and it was just, like, super, super bad. So I was lucky that we weren't in New York for that. But, yeah. Um, so I, like, this morning spent, like, a couple hours. I have to research everything for better or worse. You know, the better is that I researched the buying car. I researched buying the new car so much that, oh, like, I found this broker, and I'm saving, like, at least like a few thousand dollars on the car, if not more. And like, I was, you know, going to get the exact car that I want enough to like just pick something that was pre-made. Um, so sometimes it's good, but sometimes I research so much that it sucks up a lot of my time and it doesn't really yield that much more as a result of spending all that extra time and effort. But it's been like an hour or two this morning playing around with like different flights. I'm like, Oh, if I use my points here, then I couldn't use my points for like a potential trip to Europe for like August. So what if like I don't use my points to go to New York? I just find the cheapest flight and then I'll save the points to go to Europe. But am I saving enough points to even do Europe on points? It gets really, really complicated. If you're into like miles and points and things like that from like airline programs and hotel programs and credit cards and stuff, um, I'm like a intermediate kind of person in terms of like the miles and points with the credit cards and that kind of stuff. There are other people that are like way more into it and know like all the tricks, redemptions and all that kind of stuff. I'm like kind of intermediate. I've got um, a variety of credit cards that all earn points uh, and I kind of sort of know uh, what credit cards to, to use to buy certain things. Like when I was at the Best Buy an hour ago, I was like, okay, for this type of purchase, which credit card would give me the most points? So whenever I buy anything, um, there's always that calculation in my head that's like, okay, I'm getting groceries, it has to be this credit card. Okay, if I'm at a gas station, it has to be this other credit card. Oh, it's a restaurant, it has to be this third credit card. It's a whole thing. Yeah, but I was spending a couple hours doing that this morning, but uh, basically... End result was, yeah, I moved on my flight. I'm going to leave for New York on Saturday or Sunday. I can't remember now. I spent two hours doing something. Can't remember when my flight is. It's recorded somewhere. It'll be fine. But I'm leaving this weekend to go down to New York. I'll be there for like 
eight or nine days uh, total. And I'm going to come back the Monday after New York Pride back to LA. I'll come back that night, but I'm only going to be back in LA, like not even 24 hours because Tuesday uh, after that weekend, I'm going to fly down to Chicago. There's a friend that I haven't hung up with in like many years. I think the last time I hung up with them was legit 2015 or 2016. I think I've seen them like maybe once or twice after that at like a random house party. But like I literally have not seen them in like a very, very long time. And we're going to Chicago because we're going to see the Twice concert. If you don't know who Twice is, Twice is a pretty popular k-pop girl group they're not as popular in the u.s as like blackpink like everyone knows blackpink but in uh, asia and obviously in south korea trice is like extremely popular in in the sense that everybody knows who trice is um so i'm a big fan of trice and so is he said the only friend i know that is like a really big fan of this particular girl group so he had tickets he bought two tickets to the Trice concert in Chicago. He doesn't live in Chicago. He lives in somewhere that's not Chicago. But he's going to be in Chicago for a work thing for like a month or so. And when he found out from work that uh, that they were going to send him to Chicago around the same time when Trice was going to do the concert in Chicago, he just went and like randomly bought two tickets. He didn't know who he was going to go with, but he just like randomly bought two, two, two tickets and he was going to figure it out later. And then a few weeks ago, I was just posting something about Twice on my Instagram. And then uh, he made a comment on it. And he told me like, oh, do you want to come to Chicago? Because I have like a spare ticket. And I was like, yes, I want to come. They've actually been to LA before. They were just in LA for like the third time in like 12 months, uh, this girl group, um, to do a concert. Like I think literally like last week, I think I saw on their Instagram that they were in like SoFi Arena, which is in SoCal, to do a concert. But I don't want to go to like a concert by myself. That's weird. And none of my friends in LA like care about K-pop in that way, and especially not about this particular group. Um, and the LA concert tickets are like way more expensive because even just looking at the price, even if I had like people to go with, they're like four or $500 to start for like not even very good seats. And then when my friend told me how much he paid for the Chicago concert tickets, they were like 250 or 200, which is not cheap. But like he showed me where we would be sitting and it was like, it's actually not bad seats for 250. You would never be able to have seats that were that good for anywhere near that price. That Those tickets would be like three times the cost if we went to the LA concert, I guess, you know, more demand in LA and everything. So yeah, something to look forward to. Um, be a lot of traveling. We'll be in New York for a whole week and then in Chicago for at least a few days. And that would take us over to July. Okay. Now, to wrap it up, as always, I'd like to chat a little bit about RuPaul's Drag Race, Some Stars, Season 8, the latest episode uh, that just aired this past weekend. Would it be Episode 6? I don't have, like, a ton of notes, but I've got a couple of bullet points here. So the challenge this week was... Joan the Rusical, I think that was the name, but it was supposed to be all about uh, Joan Crawford was like the theme, right? And it was a Rusical. And in the challenge, no one did bad. Everyone did like pretty good. You know, in a lot of challenges, especially when it's like not an all-star season, you'll see there's like one or two queens that stumble like a little bit, even if they didn't like fall flat on their face. But in all-stars, everyone is a star. Well, some stars. And, you know, no one did bad. Like, everyone did pretty good in the challenge itself. The runways, though, there were some burgers on the runway. Some of the runways clearly were just not as good as the others. Some of the outfits, some of the looks were just not as good as some of the other looks that were presented. So that's a thing. But the surprise for me was, and I was watching the show with David Lamb, uh, Candy picked James's lipstick to go home. So when I was watching the episode and I saw that it's going to be Kahana and James in the bottom, it, it was hard to kind of know whether 
they deserve to be in the bottom again. Everyone was like so good. But basically, you know, based on the challenge and also like the runways, I guess I agree. I didn't have any problems with who was picked to be the, in the bottom, who was picked to be in the bottom. But I thought once I knew that those two were in the bottom, in my head, I thought immediately, oh, Kahana's going home. But it's a track record. And Dave and I talked about this before where from the point of view of one of the girls in a competition that has to draw lipsticks, if one of the bottom girls you have to choose is has a much worse track record than the other, like Kahana, she's been in the bottom multiple times. And James, I don't think James has been in the bottom before, maybe only one time. Kahana has been in the bottom like three times. And this is like her third or like fourth time in the bottom at this particular episode. It's very easy for the other queens to pick you and just claim track record, right? Because when they reveal who voted for who in the next episode, if your story is, I picked Kahana because of track record, all the other queens would be like, okay, fair, right? You know, you're not going to get any backlash. You're not going to get backlash for picking the queen with the worst track record. Assuming they didn't do like significantly worse in the challenge because of the two bottom queens, one of them clearly did worse than the other one in the challenge. That's where you can say, oh, I picked that person because they did worse, even if they didn't have a bad track record or the other bottom queen had a much worse uh, track record, right? Uh, I think maybe the queens thought Kahana did worse when I was watching it with David, we didn't think that Kahana was really like that much worse in the challenge. I think you can argue she did the worst, but I don't think it was like so much worse that it necessarily, you know, uh, yeah. But James, I felt did pretty decent. So I was thinking like, well, Kahana, like, James did at least as well as Kahana for me in the main challenge. Uh, James's runway was worse, but like Kahana has the track record. So like in my head, it was like, Kahana's going to go, no question. So the fact that Candy picked James's lipstick to go home, I like gay gas. I was like, oh, I can't believe it. Like Candy is just getting rid of the competition. And then as I thought about it more and I talked to Deva more, it could be that based on last week's drama between uh, Heidi and Candy and Jimbo and all of that, I think Candy and probably Jimbo are thinking like we're, we're on the chopping block if we ever get into the bottom because, you know, the other girls who want to get rid of uh, me or like, you know, like either Candy or Jimbo, if they ever land in the bottom because they're, they're kind of sort of winning things. Their competition, basically, right? Eliminated the competition. And the name of the game is to get to the top, right? So it'll be interesting to see uh, what happens in the future, like who wins or loses and who's in the top and the bottom if this comes back to, like, bite someone. Like, Candy can get, like, manila basically. But the interesting thing I saw is that they actually showed who everyone voted for, I think, in the Untucked, I think where they show uh, in the, in the two-way mirror who everyone else voted for. And everyone voted for James as well. So I was like, is there something about James that wasn't super obvious in the episode that made every single queen pick James to go home and not Kahana? Because I thought, me and David thought everyone was going to pick Kahana. Like, we thought it was going to be unanimous. And like, they showed everyone's lipstick, who they picked in the Untucked, and everyone picked James. So is there like an alliance thing kicking in? Uh, or is there some sort of relationship that girls have with Kahana that they don't have with James or whatever it is? Well, for her part, James didn't seem like bitter or super surprised somehow. So this could also be just like when I'm watching TV and I'm not paying full attention. It's very easy for me to be watching something and eventually like, I'll be on my laptop or I'll be on my phone. This is actually very common. So maybe I missed something. Comment on my Instagram or my the YouTube comments or something if I missed something that makes this whole thing make more sense. Um, but yeah, and then the preview for next week showed a little bit of a preview for some more drama going down in the workroom. Like someone was 
going to try to leave or something. It kind of sort of suggested that in the uh, the preview for next week's episode, uh, which I'll be having lots of fun maybe watching on the plane to New York. It's like uh, five or six hours. I need to take two planes to get to New York, and I need to kill some amount of time. So maybe I'll just download and watch it on the plane instead. But that's it for another episode of the podcast. A reminder that the video version of this podcast is on Spotify and also on my YouTube channel, Just Joey T. And this podcast is now finally available in the Google Podcast app uh, where it told me weeks to get it up there. Um, Yeah, and I hope you subscribe to my podcast. I hope you're all enjoying these episodes so far. And next week's episode, I'm actually going to record in New York. So it's going to be a little bit of a change of scenery in the video. Um, I got a couple of mics, portable mics I can pack uh, into my luggage. I'm going to not have this fancy podcasting mixer and setup. Uh, But yeah, I will be probably recording from New York next week. So uh, a little bit of a change of scenery for the next episode. I hope you tune in again. But until next time, bye.